This is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly, and in today's video, we are continuing on to the third installment for the Nitron mainframe assembly. Uh, in our previous segment, we should have gotten to a specific point here. Um, we have the back end, the back left and right frames assembled, elevator installed. Um, we have our tail bell crank arm, our frame stiffeners, um, our belt pulley ten slash tensioner system in there. Fuel tank grommets are in and cut as per that video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And then this helicopter has kind of a, a unique design because it's basically four separate pieces that are joined in the middle by um, the servo cage and main shaft support. So in our last segment, we went ahead and tackled the front uh, left side, or if you're looking at it from the front, the, the, the front right side part of the frame. And in that portion, we went over the uh, installation of the clutch stack um, the magnetic sensor mount, which is going to be a very important role, so make sure you watch that video. Um, we had our sub-assemblies installed on here, so the nose plate and the, uh, the fly barless or gyro mounting plate, throttle servo, and some of the other goodies, okay? So, as you guys can probably tell by now, the, the, the design of this is kind of unique in the way that it's going to kind of puzzle fit together, which I really like, okay, because what that means is... Um, I can basically remove, uh, and I'm going to talk to you guys about this in a moment, but there's this one plate right here, which is going to be the front left, or if you're looking at it from the back, the, the front right, and it only has the tail servo. That's it. There's, as far as I can tell, there's nothing else connected to it. So I can actually have that plate off, do all my wiring, all my cabling, and then I just have to make it to where I can plug in my tail servo and then put that plate on. Um, so here's what we're going to focus on today on the third installment on the frame. Um, we're going to take a look at, uh, well of course, so I'll show you this in the manual here in just a moment, but I went ahead and already took my other frame piece, and I just went down a little bit in the manual, and it shows you where to mount your, your tail servo, okay? This one mounts from the outside uh, with your spacers on the back, you guys can see that there, okay? Uh, and that's it. That's all that goes on this this, this piece here. So as you can see, this would fit right over here and close that all up. And now we've got our two full frame pieces. And so what we're going to be focused on today is we're going to connect them together. And this is how. So take in mind, guys, I didn't demonstrate the installation of the tail servo, but just, I mean, come on, it's pretty simple and basic. We've already installed several servos. So just pop that in, follow the manual, you're good to go. Set this piece off to the side for now. Um... What you're going to want to do is get out a couple of things. Go ahead and locate this bag with your um, your main shaft, we'll call it your main shaft support. It's got your main bearing blocks and everything. Now take in mind it does come with a little baggie of screws. Um, and I'm going to show you in the manual there's going to be, I think there's two, two or three screws that are longer than what's in this bag. But those screws actually come supplied with a different part. I think it's the, the, the bracket, the frame, uh, the little this guy here, the little nitron bracket, it's got a little bit longer screws that came in there um, for these two slots here, so there should be four of them, um, because obviously that spacer adds a little bit more of a gap onto the frame. Okay, so set your little baggie to the side with this, though, keep them together, so we're not losing stuff. And then also, go ahead at this time and get out your, uh, we'll call these the servo cage, if you will. I guess we could, that's an appropriate name, the little servo cages that they supply in there. Now this kit can house on the cyclics, okay, it can house mid-size or full-size servos, okay, and that's pretty unique. Not a lot of machines offer you that luxury. I'm going full-size on everything because I really want a, a, a nice powerful machine. I feel like the CG is going to be a little bit better with the full-size servos, to be fair, add a little bit more weight around center. Um, but if, you know, when, when, when uh, budgeting and expenses come into play, I guarantee you mid-size servos are still going to rock the heck out of this machine. Um, you still have to go full-size on the rudder and on the um, throttle, but for your cyclics to save a couple bucks, you can go mid-size. Now, um, your servo cages have what are called the, the mid-size uh, mounting brackets pre-installed onto them right out of the package. I'm going to be removing those, and again, I'll demonstrate in, you, in the manual what that's all about. And then we'll, we'll, we'll do this whole assembly, and then we're going we're gonna to unite our frames together. Now, as we progress through the manual, you'll notice that it does have us assemble the front left and front right side together. 
I am not going to do that at this time, and I'll explain to you why. Um, because again, I want to be able to do all my cabling and all my routing as best as possible before I go ahead and lock this other side on. That way I don't have to take it back off later. Uh, if you want to, just go ahead and put it on now. Just don't lock tight anything on this side yet because we're going to be removing it. Um, unless you plan on trying to route all your cables outside the heli. But I always strive for cleanliness and a really nice, neat looking model. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, let's see. what else? Oh, oh, oh. Really important tip too. If you guys remember, we've already done the main rotor build. If you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and check that out. I think that was like the first video we did. Um, but as, I, as I've talked to you guys about, as I'm building this whole machine, uh, as we get to this part where we're going to unite the frames, I know that this has a full support, fully supported um, dual bearing cage around it. I always, always, always have the main shaft installed at all times whenever I'm assembling things that are that are related to the frame. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to assemble and build the servo cage as it specifies per the manual and everything. But when I go to actually install it, I'm basically, I'm just going to take my main shaft out of my main rotor. I'm just going to pop it right out. It's just two bolts, right? Those two, the, or I'm sorry, three. Your two locking bolts and the Jesus bolt. And I will leave this main shaft in at all times, no matter what. I'm not going to remove it for any reason until my main frames are fully united. And then this should be just this smooth and make sure everything's squared up, okay? So real fast, guys, let's jump over uh, to the manual and just do a quick review um, to where we should uh, end up after this process, okay? So let's see. So the last video uh, on mainframe two, we basically ended right here, okay? So moving forward, like I said, it has you do the tail servo mount. As I said, it's simple, straightforward. Make sure you pay attention to the output shaft. It's going to be facing up instead of down. Go ahead and mount everything on. That's all simple. Set it off to the side for now. So here's where we're arriving right here. Now this is pre-assembled here from the factory. You don't have to do anything. I'm going to insert my main shaft though like we just talked about. And then it shows you here how to go ahead and put on the servo cages. Um, pay close attention to this, guys, because it does have this little recess, and it's going to sit in. And the screws also are going to be recessed. So if you put them on upside down, the, the collars of the screws would be sticking up, and you're going to get interference with parts. So just pay close attention to the, um, the recesses and the orientation on, any, on, um, on the parts. Um, make sure you lock tight everything down. Now, at this step here, which we just talked about, right? So for your mid-sized servos, um, it's got the mounting brackets, or as they label them, servo adapters. I'm going to go ahead and remove mine. If you're using the mid-size, well, just take the bolts out, lock tight them, and put them back on. I am not going to be installing my servos at this particular time. Reason why is I like to get the main shaft in, and I like to get this uh, fit onto the frames first, and then I'll install my servos. You don't have to do it that way, but I just feel like these these parts being um, divided, there's so much wiggle room in those that that you might potentially get your your cage slightly askewed. So I'm not going to risk doing that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just um, get everything installed first. Sorry, my wife's bugging me here. <laughs> um, so moving forward, guys, we'll, we'll get that done. And so right here, so I'm gonna lightly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this all installed, but then I'm gonna, I'm gonna fit it to the frames, right? The top three bolts, you're gonna get out of that little baggie. Um, this bolt here will come out of the little baggie, but then we've got these four bigger bolts. These ones we've already installed into the clutch bell assembly, as per the last video. But make sure you replace these two longer ones here. So you'll actually have some extra screws left over in the little mini bag that came with the servo cage, okay? Make sure you get those longer screws, otherwise you might otherwise you might end up rounding out your screws trying to tighten it down or something. So pay very close attention to that. And then we can kind of move forward. So I'm going to get up until this point here, and then we will come back and we will do a quick review. Um, jump back over to the bench real fast. Um, and take in mind, when we come back for our last review, though, I'm going to go ahead and have this side still off. Um, and then like we talked about, guys, don't forget to use the two longer bolts supplied um, with the bag that this came in for these other two remaining holes, okay? So 
let me get to work guys and I'll come back and we will do a, a quick review alrighty guys so here we go we've went ahead and joined the frames um, we now have them together. You can see it makes a really nice solid block too. I mean it feels good. It feels firm. You can stand up the machine now if you want to. Uh, again, like I talked about the main shaft, I mean that thing is perfect. I mean there should be absolutely no reason why this is not. If this is hard to pull up and down, like if it kind of slides or notches or something, uh, there is something that's not right. Okay, so double check. But I like to keep this in at all times. Yes, I understand that it has the, the cage and stuff around it to keep it true, but I still see no reason to not have this in at all times. Um, squared up the frames and everything, got them locked down. Now, up until this point in the build, guys, every bolt on this side, besides these, these two adjustable ones here, which will probably be for the, uh, for the fan shroud, uh, everything on this side of the frame is completely Loctited. I don't see any reason that I'm going to have to remove. Um, oh, also, besides the, the clutch stack also, that's not Loctited because we might have to shift that forward or backwards. Um, on this side of the frame, everything on this back end is completely Loctited. And, of course, I have not yet uh, united the frames together with this side. Okay. So, what I'm going to do next, now that we've got everything to this point, um, you'll notice that again, like, I, I put all my extra screws where they go on the opposing side. That way when I go to um, put the missing parts in, I just remove those screws and kind of keep them organized. Put the part on and then put my screws and stuff on, okay? But this is kind of what we're working with so far. Now, um, what I'm going to do next is I am going to start to install the servos. Um, just following the manual, we already kind of went over the manual on it, guys. Um, servo sit here, other servo on that side. Now, I'm going to go ahead and install the servo on this side with the front plate off. Reason being is, I'm pretty sure, and it does depict in the manual as well, that after the servos are in fact installed, you should be able to just go ahead and take this plate and still put it right on, even with this servo. So it doesn't appear as though this other servo will get in the way. So I'm going to do my servos. Okay, let me get all my servos installed. We'll come back and do a final review um, thus far. And then in the next video series, I'm going to talk about my wiring because I'm going to start cleaning up. I'm going to mount my fly barless system, my flight pack, get all my servos cabled. That way we can close it up and move on, okay? So that's going to be the portion we're at now, guys. Let me go ahead and get my servos mounted. We'll come back and we'll do us a final review. Alrighty guys, so here we go. We have installed successfully all three of the cyclic servos. Um, one thing that I ran into, I don't know if as you're doing this, this will be in an updated kit model or not. Um, I got one of the originals. So um, all four of these inside uh, bolts for your, uh, your servo cage, so one, two on this servo here, three and four, the inside ones, um, were a little bit too long. They were bottoming out um, on the bracket. So all I did was I just kind of got a Dremel and just, just filed them down a little bit, probably like, like two mil, somewhere around there. But the outer ones, they all work fine because they can actually sink and recess all the way past the bracket. So just a quick heads up, guys. If, if you're finding a hard time tightening those inner ones, don't force them. Um, you're going to have to cut them down a little bit. Now, if your kit's got shorter ones for the inside, don't worry about Again... I hard mounted everything. I'm not using the rubbers on this model, just per instruction. And uh, everything looks good. Now, at this point in time, um, what I'm going to do, guys, is take a break from construction. Um, even though in the manual it tells you to move on and do this and do that, I've got a lot of loose wires, I got a lot of loose cabling going on here. And right now is my best chance to come up with a wiring scheme and a wiring layout that I want to use um, to make the heli as clean as possible. And what I'm going to start doing from this point, and I'm going to, the next video in this series is going to be about the wiring, okay? But you got to realize, guys, I have to install uh, a fly barless system with satellites, okay? So let's, let's look at everything that's got to go into this machine. We've got our, all of our servos are already mounted on here. Take in mind we've got a tail servo as well, so we've got the machine. We'll set that like this. Okay, we've got the machine that we got to worry about all the wires for and our tail servo. 
I've got my fly barless control system and since I'm a spectrum guy I'm using a satellite. Um, as far as the motor is concerned uh, I'm going to be using the X-Guard um, switch ignition glow so we got to worry about how to get all that wired up. Um, we have our, our governor sensor we have to get wired up. We're going to have for our power supply we've got to go ahead and get our battery pack out. I'm using a Pulse 2550. So we've got a lot of stuff to worry about here that's all got to go inside. Um, and I want to do it as clean and as neat as possible. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to leave this side plate off. Take in mind, I got I to gotta remember that this tail servo wire is going to be there. I got to also take in mind that when I do put this on that the tail servo does recess into the frames too. So that's a big one. But as for the frame assembly portion of the series, guys, for the most part, this is where we're at. We're all good to go. Um, so thanks so much for watching. Feel free to comment and subscribe. On the next video, I'm going to go ahead and have completed all of my wiring. We'll come back and we'll actually, I'll tell you guys all about what I decided to do and give you my tips and tricks and then we'll kind of move on from there. So as always, thanks so much again, guys, for watching and supporting the channel. Remember, my friends, if Freddy can fly, so can you.